Citizen Advocacy brings people with developmental disabilities who live on thin ice at the edge of community life into relationships with people who are privileged to live on thick ice in the safe center of community in Savannah, Georgia. Citizen Advocacy engages the Southern tradition of a covered dish supper in order to celebrate the community that has emerged through these relationships. Here in the South, a covered dish supper is, is um, normally associated with, with a church function where everybody brings a dish, sits down, and has dinner together, shares a meal together. People appreciate uh, the opportunity to see one another and to be uh, part of something that feels a little bit bigger than they are. And so, I mean, our covered dish supper is one way to create that moment of celebration. With people getting together, meeting one another for the first time, and every year it gets bigger and bigger. See that oftentimes in Savannah you will go into an event here mm -hmm. and see all same. Mm -hmm. I walked in there, there were able-bodied people, not able-bodied people. There were blacks, whites, Hispanics. You know, there were wealthy, there were poor. It was just the most diverse, and it was so full of just goodwill and joy. And the dishes, you just wouldn't believe. The way they use food as the beginning of the, of the conversation is, is just, um, you know, extremely fruitful. Uh, the first time that I went to the covered dish, I sat at the table with the CEO of a company and the janitor of the company. It was the first time they shared a meal together. So, so they can have conversations and, and hear perspectives that challenge their own in, in, in an environment that's loving and safe. Everybody not cut from the same mold. So you can learn a lot of different stuff from a lot of different people. And ideas can get you to where you want to be. I think the number of people that contribute and the number of ways that they contribute is a big part of it. So it's not like there's someone putting it on and then the guests arrive. It's like everyone's putting it on. There's almost um, an organic quality to how the event occurs. Suddenly people are coming in with food. Other people are bringing wine. Other people are bringing decorations for the table. And you say, how could this be her happening? The kitchen crew, it's all voluntary. Um, so it is a big community and citizen effort. Because we want that food to come out of people's kitchens and from people's hearts. I think the reason why they were willing to do so is because they said, we believe in this idea of community. We do believe that everybody belongs at the table. Um, and the covered dish supper is kind of a representation of that where everyone is at the table. 35 table hosts who would each bring their own dishes to the table and decorate their tables in unique ways. When I first started going and they asked me to bring plates, bring eight plates, and he said, now don't bring stuff that's chipped and tired looking, bring your best. And I, that has been a concept that really, I think kind of expresses the whole idea. When you look at the tables, you realize they're all different and they're all beautiful. Many people will tap into the themes that we want to honor in citizen advocacy, like justice and standing up for one another, um, inclusion, um, inviting people who you wouldn't ordinarily meet to get together and talk. At the heart of the Covered Dish Supper, is people sharing stories at the microphone of the relationships entered into through citizen advocacy. These stories are why people come together. These stories are what people celebrate. Well, these stories that people tell through the years have been very powerful. Uh, it's always the stories. That's what I always go for, is to hear the stories. Uh, one of my favorite stories is taking Amy Hughes to meet a man who was being starved to death and tied down in a chair in a nursing home in Brunswick. We found Mr. Hall in the day room tied down in a chair. The lunch was four puddles of cold food and it was in front of him. Well, the green might be peas, the white might be potatoes, the orange might be carrots. What about the brown stuff? Amy dipped her finger in and tasted it. Maybe meat? 
that one motion said, if it's good enough for you to put in your mouth, it's good enough to pe for me to put in mine. Not everybody would have done that, and that was the beginning of questioning, challenging, and changing. And Bracky Hall got to come back to Savannah and be close to his mama. I love seeing Cleet Bergen organize over 300 people over a five-year period to build a house with and for a family so they could bring their uncle back from the loveless life of institutional. I've loved finding forever families for children who were called unadoptable and being able to watch them grow into being grown-ups. Those stories have mattered to people, both in the telling and also in the hearing. Some of those stories are, have been written and have become, you know, part of kind of who we are. Chuck Jones has shared the story of his relationship with Jafari Grant, entitled Confessions of an 18-Wheel Truck Driver, at a covered dish supper in front of 400 people. Here he shares out with a much smaller group. The first invitation came from Tom Kohler, who offered me the invitation to meet and get to know Jafari. We met at Shoney's on Victory Drive on a Saturday morning at the breakfast bar, the three of us, and then the two of us. The second invitation is the more important one, and that's the invitation Jafari offered to me to be in his life and the invitation that I offered to him to be in mine. This is the deeper invitation. It is this deeper invitation that makes citizen advocacy real. It is this deeper invitation that makes citizen advocacy radical. On a deeper level, we share the universal needs of acceptance, companionship, respect, and the desire for self-determination. That deeper level of understanding was nearly impossible for me to grasp before I came to know Jafari. If I noticed someone at all, I would make a broad assumption based on appearance, then retreat as quickly as possible back into my own world. After I met Jafari and got to know him, I was startled at what I began noticing when I looked at someone, really looked. I'm able to look past the facade and I'm often amazed by what I see. Jafari has the grace and patience to allow me to stumble along beside him. I have slowly come to respect his struggle, tough at times and on occasion an overwhelming struggle. I have learned that when the struggle is hardest, I must listen the closest. Look this twice. When the struggle is hardest, I must listen the closest. Jafari does not preach to me, he teaches me, by example, to persevere, to endure. I can talk to Jafari without being judged. I know Jafari will listen and mostly just be there with a few words of encouragement. He will never say to me, you shouldn't feel that way. I have judged him, yet he has taught me to be accepting. Wrote that twice. I have judged him, yet he has taught me to be accepting. There were times when Jafari pushed me away. There were times when trying to get the bureaucracy to pay better attention drove me to distraction and away. And there were times when my pull yourself up by your own bootstraps philosophy blurred my vision and took me away. Every time Jafari welcomes me back, I have learned and I keep learning that Jafari and I do best when the word we is growing, building bridges between lots of people. For Jafari and me, it's just figuring out the next thing to do together. Walking beside Jafari helps me become the person I thought I was. He has exposed me to myself, and therefore, the world. It's what the community should be and what the community should look like. A gathering of all the goodness that, that can happen for Community. It comes as close to me of a metaphorical representation of a heavenly banquet, of anything in the whole year, or in my experience. But it's sort of grown into a party, I would say, to celebrate. Celebrate this community that's formed around citizen advocacy. Let's all come together and uh, share in the, um, our stories, our, our, our journey more or less with citizen advocacy. Citizen advocacy cover dish is a great example of, of Savannah building a bigger town. The love of all the stories was just so wonderful. And everybody and everything that I love about Savannah, all in one room, all having a good time together. 
everyone and anyone in Savannah that does things, loves things, makes things happen, loves people, are creative, imaginative, hardworking, all show up for this event. That's why it's the best coverage of supper in the world and the best social event in Savannah, period. It's just grassroots. And I, got, I met a lot of friends and everything. I helped had the food in the kitchen and everything. The citizen advocacy covered dish is for this microcosm of what could be, you know, if you're ever going to attain the beloved community, this is what it could be. We all need